So I figured I'd do a uh, intro to this video. I just dropped a uh, a few videos uh, saying how to end world hunger, end homelessness, and how we can have more prosperous lives and live hundreds of years. That is not clickbait. Um, it's all there, but I figured I would start taking uh, bits and pieces of it out and just uh, condensing it. This part, I'm just going to go over uh, how, like, like in the Bible and, like, the Epic of Gilgamesh and other, like, ancient, like, writings that says people were living hundreds of years. I know exactly how they did it, and, yeah, it is true. So, um, in this video, you'll get to see the actual science behind it and how it actually works. And, yes, we can do it again to live hundreds of years at the same time making us all prosperous and doing things like e ending world hunger and homelessness and stuff like that i know it sounds like science fiction but it is true so uh enjoy Oxygen therapy is a medical treatment where a patient breathes 100% oxygen under pressure in a pressurized chamber. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. So you can see that this is a huge increase in the amount of oxygen that a patient is getting. The oxygen is pushed into the plasma, into the lymphatics, and into the distal tissues, and it creates the body's capability of creating angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels, which in turn bring more blood and healing factors to an area that is hypoxic. This has miraculous effects on healing. Currently, this treatment is limited to about 13 conditions, and of those, we treat five here at Martin Health System, David L. Smythe Wound Center. Of those five, our most common condition is diabetic wound of the lower extremities, but we treat radiation injuries to either soft tissue or bone, and chronic refractory osteomyelitis, and failing skin grafts or flaps. Those are our most common conditions that we treat. 
the patient is placed in the chamber and the treatment is usually a, almost two hours. And while the patient is in the chamber, they can watch television, which is mounted on the outside of the chamber. Nothing can go into the chamber with the patient except a small bottle of water. We are very safety conscious about the combustibility of oxygen, so we um, maintain highest quality of safety standards. Usually it takes about 30 treatments, but sometimes patients see results sooner, and we do have a lot of great resolution of symptoms. We see wounds that heal, that have not healed in the past. Um, for instance, uh, a, a male patient that may have had prostate cancer and has had radiation to the prostate that has passed through the bladder, um, sometimes results in hematuria and urinary obstruction from blood clots. We see great resolution of these type of symptoms. And for someone who has had maybe a surgical flap from a mastectomy or some other sort of surgical issue, we see great results because of the angiogenesis that has been created. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen that they need to fly. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen that they need to fly. And here's a Brachiosaurus. This animal has nostrils the size of a modern horse. What that means is that it couldn't even breathe today. This animal requires not only a different atmosphere, but an entirely different ecological system to survive at all. And here's a Brachiosaurus. This animal has nostrils the size of a modern horse. What that means is that it couldn't even breathe today. This animal requires not only a different atmosphere, but an entirely different ecological system to survive at all. Neanderthal skeleton and skull is absolutely identical to a modern human, except for a few key features. The bones are thicker, stronger, more fit. Also the wisdom teeth down here fit absolutely perfectly. These thick brows can vary in size from skull to skull. And a small detail that a lot of people may not know. The human brow of any individual, this bone right up here, continues to grow just ever so slightly through the entirety of a person's life. You may see on an old man's brow, he's got a very defined brow. So if you were to live two or three or four or five hundred years, then that much larger brow that you see indenting up right there is precisely how your skull would look. When you set out to write a book about breathing, the last thing you think you're going to be doing is handing you know, around a bunch of ancient skulls and, and looking at teeth. But, but that's where this journey led me. I had heard from some biological anthropologists that our faces have changed and that our mouths have gotten too small. And that was one of the reasons so many of us were breathing so poorly. And so I thought, well, this sounds interesting. These people are legit. I want to check it out. And if you take an ancient skull, anything older than 500 years old, 5,000 years old, 50,000 years old, you're going to see by and large about 99% chance these skulls are going to have perfectly straight teeth. They never had their wisdom teeth removed. They never had braces, any orthodonture, anything. They had straight teeth because they had these very wide and large mouths and these powerful jaws. If you start getting into the modern era of industrialized food, mouths start shrinking. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics, it's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go, so they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. So this is one of the reasons why so many people have snoring, sleep apnea, and other respiratory problems. This sounded so bizarre, because it's nothing I'd ever learned in school, 
But all anyone needs to do is look up some ancient skulls if you're online and check out their teeth and check out how they have these huge jaws, these big, flat, wide faces, powerful faces, and they all had this. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here has a two and a half foot long wingspan, has a two and a half foot long wingspan, has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen, 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 oxygen that they need to fly. Neanderthal skeleton and skull is absolutely identical to a modern human, except for a few key features. The bones are thicker, stronger, more fit. Also, the wisdom teeth down here fit absolutely perfectly. These thick brows can vary in size from skull to skull. And a small detail that a lot of people may not know, the human brow of any individual, this bone right up here, continues to grow just ever so slightly through the entirety of a person's life. You may see on an old man's brow, he's got a very defined brow. So if you were to live two or three or four or five hundred years, then that much larger brow that you see indenting up right there is precisely how your skull would look. And here's a Brachiosaurus. This animal has nostrils the size of a modern horse. What that means is that it couldn't even breathe today. This animal requires not only a different atmosphere, but an entirely different ecological system to survive at all. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen that they need to fly. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a medical treatment where a patient breathes 100% oxygen under pressure in a pressurized chamber. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. Indonesia's land of Papua, Tana Papua. Consisting of two provinces, Papua supports one of the only remaining large tropical forests in the world. With the Amazon and Congo basins, these forests serve as the lungs of the planet. And in Papua, they are the lifeblood of the people. Dan yang terutama uh, yang membuat saya sangat terkesan itu karena hutan di Papua itu memberi banyak kehidupan untuk masyarakat di Papua. Jadi sumber kehidupan mereka itu sebetulnya di hutan. With the Amazon and Congo basins, these forests serve as the lungs of the planet. With the Amazon and Congo basins, these forests serve as the lungs of the planet. With the Amazon and Congo basins, these forests serve as the lungs of the planet. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. We normally only breathe 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen that they need to fly. For example, this dragonfly fossilized on the screen here 
has a two and a half foot long wingspan. Dragonflies take in perfectly the amount of oxygen that they need to fly. So you can see that this is a huge increase in the amount of oxygen that a patient is getting. The oxygen is pushed into the plasma, into the lymphatics, and into the distal tissues, and it creates the body's capability of creating angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels, 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 which in turn bring more blood and healing factors to an area that is hypoxic. This has miraculous effects on healing. Currently, this treatment is limited to about 13 conditions and of those we treat five here at Martin Health System David L. Smythe Wound Center. Of those five our most common condition is diabetic wound of the lower extremities but we treat radiation injuries to either soft tissue or bone. Neanderthal skeleton and skull is absolutely identical to a modern human except for a few key features. The bones are thicker, stronger, more fit. We see wounds that heal that have not healed in the past. It all started in 1995 when John D. Liu, as an ordinary cameraman, got an assignment to film the Lush Plateau in China. He saw how the local people transformed an area almost the size of the Netherlands from a barren, exhausted desert into a large green oasis. He was baffled. From that moment on, greening deserts became his goal in life. Neanderthal skeleton and skull is absolutely identical to a modern human, except for a few key features. The bones are thicker, stronger, more fit. Also the wisdom teeth down here fit absolutely perfectly. These thick brows can vary in size from skull to skull. And a small detail that a lot of people may not know. The human brow of any individual, this bone right up here, continues to grow just ever so slightly through the entirety of a person's life. You may see on an old man's brow, he's got a very defined brow. So if you were to live two or three or four or five hundred years, then that much larger brow that you see indenting up right there is precisely how your skull would look.
It all started in 1995 when John D. Liu, as an ordinary cameraman, got an assignment to film the Lush Plateau in China. He saw how the local people transformed an area almost the size of the Netherlands from a barren, exhausted desert into a large green oasis. He was baffled. From that moment on, greening deserts became his goal in life. So if you were to live two or three or four or five hundred years, then that much larger brow that you see indenting up right there is precisely how your skull would look. <laughs> 